This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. The daily reminders, this is your brother Abdul Wahab Salim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yaseen, He says, Inna ashab al jannati liyawma fi shughul infaqihun. Today, indeed, the people of Jannah will be at work, will be engulfed in work. Fakihun. And what they will be doing is, they'll be quite happy with their occupation. They'll be really, really busy, but their occupation that they have, they'll be very, very happy with it. What's this occupation that they'll have? And why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call, call it an occupation? Usually an occupation doesn't have the meaning of fun in there. When you say, I'm, when somebody calls you and says, I'm kind of occupied at the moment, what does the other person think? He thinks you're busy, you're doing something really important, significant. He doesn't think you're sitting there entertaining yourself. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the people of Jannah, calls their occupation or their enjoyment occupation. And the reason for that is because they will be so busy enjoying themselves, it's as if their enjoyment is an occupation. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and He says, just so you understand that this occupation is not busyness, it's not, um, it won't wear you out, it's not actual work. He says, فَاكِهُونَ They'll be quite happy with what they're doing. They're actually having a lot of fun. And they're so busy having funds, fun that they can't really answer a phone call or anything of that sort. So Allah says, إِنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ لِيَوْمَ فِي شُغُلٍ فَاكِهُونَ They're busy, they're occupied, but they're happy with their occupation. هم وأزواجهم them and their their wives their spouses في ظلال they will be in shades now I want you to imagine for a second anything that you really want to do in your life imagine yourself at the moment sitting before a beach if you're sitting before a beach site, especially in the morning time when the sun is out, it's really hot, what do you plan on doing? What do you think? What do you do? What do you think of? Right away you think of an umbrella, you think of a chair, you think of a table, you think of some juice, you think, think of some fruits, maybe some grapes that your wife is feeding you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing just that. He says, my slave, whatever you want in this dunya, when you think of that beach site that you really want to be at, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it to you in Jannah. They're busy with that, that joyful occupation. And what's that occupation? They will be in Jannah, sitting with their spouses, in shades. Now the interesting thing is, Allah uses the word lilal, which has two singular forms, shades, and umbrellas. So Allah is telling you that there will be light and that light will require shade and that won't just be random shade, rather you can literally imagine yourself under a chair with an umbrella because Allah says, عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ They will be on chairs, they'll be resting, reclining on chairs. But above those chairs will be these shades. Now what are you shading yourself from? Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Qur'an, لَا يَرَوْنَ فِيهَا شَمْسًا وَلَا زَمْهَرِيرًا They won't see any, any sun in Jannah. There is no sun. You're shading yourself through the brightness that becomes part of Jannah through the nur of Allah Azza wa through the light of Allah Azza wa فِي ظِلَالٍ عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ مُتَّكِئُونَ And they'll be reclining on these couches. لَهُمْ فِيهَا فَاكِهَةٌ And just as I said, remember the grapes that you wanted to have in your mouth while you're reclining on your chair? Your wife comes and gives you the grapes or you go to your wife and give her the grape? Well, Allah is saying over here, لَهُمْ فِيهَا فَاكِهَةٌ They will have fruits therein. وَلَهُمْ مَا يَدَّعُونَ And they will have anything else that they desire. Then, Allah continues and He says, to add to that, don't forget the fact that you'll actually have the opportunity to speak to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Subhanallah. Salamun qawlam min Rabbil Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come out and He will say to the people of Jannah, Salam. 
peace be unto you. So for all those that look at Islam and they say it's not a peaceful religion and you guys are just marketing all these gimmicks about peace and this and that, this is our Lord that we believe Him to be our Lord and He's your Lord as well whether you like it or not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come out to the people of Jannah and say Salamun Qawla bin Rabbir Rahim. So he'll say Salam and this will be a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not just any Lord, he said Mir Rabbir Rahim from a Lord that is very merciful. But he is merciful. But if you're a criminal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy doesn't end up saving you from the crime that you've committed. Watch out. If you've committed a crime, then be careful. Repent to your Lord. Allah says, However, those that are guilty ones, get aside, move aside, move away from the believers. Everybody will be standing there. People will be all together, Yawm al Hashr, on the day of resurrection. Everybody will be standing there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the people that are criminals, move aside, you criminals. To humiliate them and make them recognize that just as you were aside from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted you to do, you will be aside from the people that have done what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them to do. Stay away from. Get away from these people. Get away, from, become separate. Separate yourself from the believers. Ayyuhal mujrimun, O criminals. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns around and He starts speaking to everyone. And this is subhanAllah from the rhetoric of the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at first He tells the people, the criminals move aside. And then He looks at everyone all together and starts speaking and addressing everyone. Let me give you an example of this in your, your personal life, dear viewer. When your mom gets mad at you and there's four, four or five of you, and somebody had done something bad. Let's just say someone left home after 11 o'clock, and your curfew is 9. When your mom or your dad will get mad at you, first and foremost, they will single the criminal out, and they'll say that, why did you do such and such? Get away, you know, you're not a good child or whatever it may be. And thereafter, they will address the whole family and say, didn't I tell you guys not to go out at 9 o'clock? Why? Because they're trying to show that child that you're so worthless at the moment in my eyes that I don't even want to speak to you. So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does over here. He says, وَمْتَازُ الْيَوْمَ أَيُّهَا الْمُجْرِمُونَ Oh criminals, turn around, get away, get by yourself. And then he says to everybody, Alam a'had ilaykum, ya bani Adam. Did I not charge you, O oh child or children of Adam? Did I not give you the responsibility, O oh children of Adam? Ya bani Adam, O oh children of Adam, Allah ta'bud al shaytan, that you don't worship Satan, that's all I asked you for. I asked, and then he turned to, as I said, Allah turned to everybody, and then he started saying this. To be even more stronger in his rebuttal of what those people had done. And to be able to rebuke them by not even addressing them. Addressing everybody, but the khitab, or the message is being addressed to them particularly. And it's a reminder for everybody else as well. Allah is saying, did I not empower you? Did I not tell you? Not to worship shaitan, not to worship Satan. إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ مُبِينٌ He is a clear enemy for you. Why do you worship him? Why do you follow his path? And then Allah says, وَأَنِي عَبُدُونِي هَذَا صِرَاطٌ مُسْتَقِيمٌ My path is very clear, it's straight. Follow me, worship me. Did I not tell you guys to do that? He's, t- he's asking all of mankind now, the children of Adam. وَلَقَدْ أَضَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًّا كَثِيرًا And then he starts, Rebuking further and explaining what stupidity these people that didn't follow the path of Allah Azza wa Jal ended up committing. He says, وَلَقَدْ أَضَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًّا كَثِيرًا Verily, this Satan had misled so many people from amongst you. أَفَلَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْقِلُونَ Did not, Allah says, did you not understand and comprehend the fact that if you look in the past, there's so many nations that have been destroyed. If you look in the past, there's so many nations that have been misled. All of that because of Satan and you still continue to follow him? What are you thinking? It's almost as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
is saying, didn't I tell you so? I already told you, why are you doing this? وَلَقَدْ أَضَلَّ مِنْكُمْ جِبِلًّا كَثِيرًا He had misled so many people from before you, why then do you follow him? Did you not comprehend the fact that he'd misled so many people before? Of course he did, everybody understands. Satan has led, misled people. But people, their desires overtake them. And we are commanded to go against our desires. And oftentimes, people end up blaming shaitan. And shaitan can't make the best of us if we control our nufus. Because shaitan, he gives us waswas. He whispers in our ears, but we're the ones who follow that whisper. And that's why the Prophet wasallam he said in a hadith, أَعْدَى عَدُوَّيْكَ نَفْسُكَ الَّتِي بَيْنَ جَنْبَيْكَ the worst of your two enemies is the soul that's right before you. So your soul is what you have to work on, dear brother, dear viewer, dear sister. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and then He says that for the criminals, He says, هَذِهِ جَهَنَّمُ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ This right here is the Jahannam, the hellfire that I'd promised you. إِلْسْلَوْهَا الْيَوْمَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْفُرُونَ Go and burn therein, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Now the reason why I stopped at this verse is because before that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained what will be for the believers in Jannah. And over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains what will be for the people in hellfire. What's in, what's in it for the people in hellfire? They'll be burning. Allah tells them, اسلوها اليوم And a lot of times people mistranslate this to mean, go to it. But the correct translation and the better of the tafsir in this particular verse and other verses of its likes, the word islaw means to burn and to melt. Go inside of hellfire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and burn therein. Bima kuntum takfurun. He gave them the reasoning. Because you disobeyed me and disbelieved in me, I'd already commanded you to worship me, and my path is very clear. I commanded you not to worship shaitan, and his path is very crooked, but you still did it. And since you did it, go inside, and you did kufr. You disbelieved. That, actions of, that action of yours in following the shaitan and leaving off my path was kufr. So go inside Jahannam, hellfire and burn therein. Look at the contrast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the people of Jannah and He says, Inna ashab al -jannah. Look at the beauty. Ashab al jannah al yawma fi shuhur in fact. They're going to be so engulfed in embracing their enjoyment. And the people of Jahannam will be so engulfed and so busy with embracing their wounds. The choice is yours. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the choice and He's put the burden upon you. He said, Alam a'ad ilaykum. Did I not burden you? Did I not put you in charge of doing what? Allah ta'abudu shaitan. Not worshipping shaitan. And worshipping me instead, Allah is saying. With that being said, we'll come to a close. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the tawfiq to worship Him, none other than Him, to follow His path, not the path of Satan, not the path of our own nufus our own souls and our own desires, rather the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger desire most.